Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about how to model periodic behavior. So the goal is to use trig functions to model uh, periodic behavior. We're going to talk about transformation of trigonometric functions, and you're going to work on uh, developing equations for periodic functions. All right, so the first thing I want you to do is I want you to create a table for sine uh, y is equal to sine in parentheses x minus pi fourths plus 1, and y is equal to sine x. Then I want you to fill in the table and then graph the functions. So I'm going to pause here while you do that. All right, these are the values that you should get for sine of x for the given table. And this, by the way, is s for uh, sine. So I had to abbreviate in order to... Uh, fit it into the space, but these are the values you should get for uh, y is equal to sine of x minus pi over 4 in parentheses plus 1. Now I want you to graph. All right, so you're going to graph the function y is equal to sine of x first, and then the translated function. And you can see if you compare the two functions that we have a uh, shift upwards of plus 1 and a shift to the right of pi fourths. So now we're going to relate that to a formula for you to use uh, for uh, transforming original parent function sine of x and cosine of x to a transformed uh, trigonometric function. And that uh, formula is going to be y is equal to a times sine b of x minus h plus k. Now we've already worked on in the prior section establishing that a is equal to the amplitude and b is equal to or has a relationship to the period where 2 pi over b is equal to the period. So h now represents the horizontal shift and remember the sine is going to be the opposite shift. So if I'm shifting the function, the parent function to the right, then uh, the sine will be negative. If I'm shifting the function to the left, the sine sign will be positive. Uh, and then k represents the vertical shift. If I shift the sign up, it'll be positive. Down, k will be negative. All right, so let's go ahead and take care of some simple equations and try to understand how uh, the amplitude, the period, uh, and the horizontal and vertical shift occur relative to the parent function. So take this particular function, y is equal to 5 sine 2 of, uh, 2 of x minus 4 plus 2, and tell me how it shifts uh, right and left, up and down, uh, what the period is, and then what the amplitude is. All right, so we see the amplitude is 5, so 5 is the amplitude. Uh, the period is 2 pi over b, so 2 pi over 2 is equal to pi. Uh, the horizontal shift is going to be plus 4, so the opposite sine sign of minus 4 plus 4, and the vertical shift is going to be plus 2. So let's do several more of these problems together. So I'm going to pause here while you complete this exercise. All right, so we see that uh, the graph shifts 2 to the left and 7 up. Number 2, it shifts 3 down because I'm going to subtract the 3 from both sides and then to the right 5. Number 3, I'm going to shift 2 up, so I add 7 to both sides, 2 up and then 9 down. On to the next set of questions. So now we're going to add in amplitude and period. And I want you to complete this work. I'm going to pause for a moment. All right, we see the amplitude is 8. Period is 2 pi over 1, 2 pi. Horizontal shift is negative 4, or 4 to the left, and vertical shift is plus 2. In problem number 2, amplitude is 2. Uh, the period is 2 pi over 4, or 1 half pi. Horizontal shift is to the right 5. Vertical shift is going to be down 3 after we subtract 3 from both sides. Number three, <clears throat> amplitude is three. The period is two pi over two or pi. Horizontal shift is nine to the left. And the vertical shift, I'm going to add five to both sides. Oh, excuse me, this is incorrect, so I'm going to cross this off. I'm going to add seven to both sides, and I end up with a vertical shift of plus two. All right, so just to reiterate, y is equal to a times cosine b of x minus h plus k where h is the horizontal shift of the parent function, k represents the vertical shift, a is the amplitude, and b uh, represents or has a relationship to the period in that 2 pi over b is equal to the period. 
Right, so I want you now to graph uh, sine of x plus pi over 2 and y is equal to cosine of x. So you're going to create your table first. I'm going to pause here while you fill in the values and graph. Right, so you should get these values. y is equal to uh, sine x plus pi over 2 and y is equal to cosine of x. And you notice that all of the values are the same. Right, so sine of x plus pi over 2 and y is equal to cosine of x are the same function. Um, and that's why we refer to both sine and cosine curves as sine waves, uh, because cosine is just a shift of pi over 2 uh, from sine, uh, and also the same thing for the sine curve. All right, so now we're going to move on to uh, defining a uh, trigonometric function based on a curve. And I'm going to walk you through this step by step. So I give you a graph uh, here where, where the peak is at 5 and the trough is at negative uh, 1. And so we're going to go through the process of writing a sine function for this curve. So just to recall <clears throat> the transformed uh, equation or formula is y is equal to a times sine b of x minus h plus k. So we're going to pick these off one at a time. We're going to find the amplitude. So the amplitude is a deviation from the peak to the median. So we need to find out what the median is and the peak, and that's going to be our amplitude. All right, so we're going to uh, look for our median, and the median is going to be the halfway point between the peak and the trough. I have negative 1 and 5, uh, and I'm going to add those two together. 5, I'm sorry, I'm going to, uh, yes, I'm going to add those two together. 5 plus negative 1 divided by 2 is equal to 2. So the midline is going to be y is equal to 2. And now we're going to find the uh, peak to the median is going to be 5 to y is equal to 2. So the midline, and let me just draw the midline in here. Uh, and so the difference between the peak and the median is 3. Another way to do this, and this is how I did this initially before... Um, I change this. I, what you can do is add the peak and the trough together, divide by 2, and that's going to be your, uh, I'm sorry, subtract the uh, uh, trough from the peak, divide by 2, that's going to be uh, the absolute value or difference between the peak and the trough, and then divide by 2, and that'll give you your amplitude. Uh, the other way is to do it, as I've just done it and changed here, uh, you're going to find out what the midline is, y is equal to 2, by adding 5 and negative 1 together to find uh, really the midpoint of those two points, and then finding the deviation from the midline, which in this case is 3. So the amplitude is going to be 3. So I'm going to write that in here, uh, amplitude of 3. And so the next step is for us to find uh, the B value, which relates to the period. So the period is going to be uh, 2 pi over B. And so we need to find out what uh, the length, the horizontal length is for one cycle. And normally I do peak to peak, so we're going to find the x value for peak 1, x value for peak 2. Uh, we're going to subtract peak 1 from peak 2 to find the period. That's what we're going to do here. So peak 1 at 3 pi force, peak 2 at 11 pi force. And so that uh, becomes our period. Our period is 8 pi over 4, or 2 pi. So 2 pi is the period. Uh, 2 pi is the period. So 2 pi over b is the period, so b ends up being equal to 1. So now I'm going to write 1 into my equation here. And of course, you don't need to write 1 when you write an equation. If there's no value listed, it's assumed to be 1 for b. All right, so next step is to find the horizontal shift from the original sine function. And this is probably the most difficult part of uh, the process of establishing the equation. So what we want to do is we want to find the shift uh, from the original sine function from uh, 0, or where x is equal to 0, to where the midline crosses the ascending portion of the graph. Uh, so at the midline, the parent sine function will be equal to 0. So if I were to move the midline to the parent graph, you can see that uh, the midline is going to intersect uh, the... Uh, Sine, a normal parent sine function at 0, uh, 0, 0. So we want to find out what the deviation is as we move the midline to where it should be for the transformed uh, sine function. So what we're looking for is uh, this spot here, and we're looking to find out uh, how it's been translated or shifted horizontally. 
So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take uh, the peak here at 3 pi over 4 comma 5, and then the trough location here at pi fourths. And we know that the midline is going to intersect on the x-axis halfway between the two. So I'm going to add the two together, 3 pi over 4 plus negative pi over 4 divided by 2. And I can see that the point of intersection on the ascending portion of the sine curve with the midline, which is halfway between the peak and the trough, is going to be at pi 4. So I know that the shift from the original sine function to the translated function is going to be plus pi force or pi force to the right. All right, so then I'm going to fill that information out in my uh, equation 3 times sine of 1 uh, x minus pi force plus k. So the last thing I need to do is to figure out what the vertical shift is. And the vertical shift is just a shift of the median from the original sine function. In fact, we've already completed this. Uh, but let's go back and revisit where the median is. So the median, uh, again, is at y is equal to 2. The parent function for sine is y is equal to 0. That's where the median is. So I've shifted from the original uh, sine function of the midline, from the original sine function, y is equal to 0, to the translated uh, function, where the median is y is equal to 2. I shifted up two units. So the midline is shifted from y is equal to sine x uh, to the translated function by 2. So I'm going to fill that out. Uh, y is equal to 3 times sine x minus pi over 4 plus 2. All right, so last thing we need to do is figure out how we would write a cosine function. So uh, we're going to go through the same process with the cosine function. And recall that, remember the cosine function and the sine functions are related in all aspects except for the horizontal shift. Uh, so let's ask a couple questions. All right, so we're going back to the uh, translated formula, y is equal to a cosine b of x minus h plus k. Uh, will the amplitude change? And the answer is no. The amplitude doesn't change between sine and cosine functions. Uh, will the period change? No, the period does not change between the two functions just because we're changing one from sine to cosine. Will the h value change? Okay, so now the h value is going to change. And again, this is the tricky part of finding uh, the equation for both sine and cosine. And now we're going to figure out what the shift is uh, from the y-axis to the peak. So if you recall that cosine at uh, x is equal to 0 has its peak of 1. So now we want to find with a translated function where the peak is relative to uh, the y-axis or where x is equal to 0. And we can see pretty easily that there's a shift to the right of 3 pi over 4. And that was already identified in the original function. So pretty simply we can find out what the peak is. And sometimes cosine functions are a little bit easier to work with because the peak is usually identified. So we can see that the uh, peak has shifted uh, 3 pi over 4 to the right. So I'm going to write that into my function now. y is equal to 3 times cosine x minus 3 pi over 4 plus k. So the last thing we need to do is to find the k value. The k value does not change between the two functions. So simply, uh, y is equal to 3 times cosine 1 uh, of x minus 3 pi over 4, 1 times x minus 3 pi over 4 plus 2. And again, the median changed from the original uh, function uh, to the uh, translated function by plus 2. All right, so let's take a look at the two uh, functions. y is equal to 3 times sine x minus pi over 4 plus 2, and y is equal to 3 times cosine x minus 3 pi over uh, 4 plus 2. And I'll leave you with a question. What is the difference between these two functions? And what do you notice about, if you take a look at the unit circle, uh, what uh, the sine and cosine functions and how they're related and when their values are the same based on different radian measures and what that difference between those two measures is. Uh, that's it for uh, modeling periodic behavior. Come back and join us next time in the next edition of Auten Math.